Triple E EDC back again with another late video. This is the Microtech Stitch. Um, welcome if you're a new subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Um, and if you do like this uh, type of content, go ahead and like the video. It lets me know that you like this type of content and I should continue producing more of it. Uh, but let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about this knife. I actually really love this knife, um, but I'm also passing along this knife. So I'll tell you a little bit about it both. Why do I like this knife and why am I pa ultimately passing it along? So let's go ahead and uh, do some size comparisons first. We're going to uh, see, first of all, this is a pretty big knife. This is the Spyderco Paramilitary 3, or Para 3 and Paramilitary 2, uh, and also the Benchmade Super Freak and the Mini Freak. Now you'll see right here, the cutting edge is very, the cutting edge length is very different uh, on the Super Freak, even though this the Super Freak is smaller, the Super Freak has a lot more cutting edge. Uh, than this knife. Uh, as far as the PM2, I probably should mention right off the bat, um, didn't show you guys right off the bat, but that cutting edge on the PM2 is actually a little bit similar. Uh, you're gonna, it's another one of those knives that has, that has a lot of handle and less blade, less cutting edge. All right, uh, let's go ahead and look at one more size comparison here, the Benchmade uh, Bug Out and the Benchmade uh, Griptilian. And uh, actually, I'll, I'll do a couple of more because a lot of Microtech owners are probably going to be interested in the shift, in the um, stitch. So I'll do a couple of Microtechs here. Uh, <clears throat> well, let's do a, a Benchmade, Benchmade Claymore. And we're going to do the Microtech Ultratech. Let's go ahead and put this down here. And the Microtech Cypher. You can see it's much, uh, not as long as the Cypher, and uh, it's longer than the Ultratech, but the cutting edge again on that Ultratech um, is going to be about the same, and you're getting about the same cutting edge in a much smaller package. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the good and the bad. So good, right off the bat, <clears throat> these ergonomics are sick on this. Uh, in the choke up position, your this knife, the blade is like, it's part of your hand. It, it is it's completely melted into your hand. It is crazy how good the ergos on, are, are on in the choke up position. In the choke up position, uh, I'm, I'm gonna give them a nine and a half out of 10 uh, on ergonomics. It's just really, really good. Um, next thing, the, uh, the action on this is very good. As you can see, this thing fires out with authority. It is an automatic. This does not come in a manual version. Um, it is uh, made by uh, Borka, or the design is by Borka Blades. Uh, the custom does come in a, uh, a manual option, um, but the Microtech version only comes in auto, so just be aware of that. Uh, but it does fire out with authority, and you get that nice sort of Microtech uh, uh, Microtech uh, automatic feeling, which is great. Um, next up is the uh, is the blade itself. The blade itself is actually really useful. It looks like it would be um, pretty thick, and it actually is pretty thick stock. Uh, if you look here, here's it against a Benchmade Freak, and here it is against a Paramilitary Two. Right, so it actually is relatively thick stock, uh, but at the same time, it actually comes down to a relatively thin edge. It's actually somewhat of aggressive grind, and you can see the edge there actually gets pretty thin. So it, it becomes a lot more useful for uh, tasks than you would think, uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, next, I really like this notch. It really adds to the ergonomics. I know I uh, just raved about the ergonomics, but I like the fact that you have this harpoon notch over here. Um, usually harpoon notches don't add that much to a knife. Let me bring out another uh, harpoon knife over here. Um, in the choke up position, you know, it adds somewhat. This is the uh, Olamic Wayfarer. Um, th this adds a little bit, but it doesn't feel like my thumb belongs there necessarily. Uh, whereas the, the harpoon notch on here, uh, it feels like your thumb belongs there. So again, it, about that ergonomics, it's just another reason why the ergonomics is so good. I uh, really like the blade design on this with that uh, swedge up top coming in, um, you know, to that, uh, coming out to that tip. The fact that the, uh, that, that the blade ha remains thick out to here and then maintains sort of a, uh, um, 
you know, a high grind, not a high grind, but a, where the grinds meet over here, where it's the thickest, it maintains some thickness all the way out to the edge, which means you're, despite the fact that this does get thinner out toward the edge, it actually re remains somewhat uh, stout um, against lateral force, which is quite nice. Um, so you have both a piercing edge and an edge that has, uh, has some reinforcement with uh, um, some lateral force. So that is a, a huge plus. That being said, don't apply lateral force to a knife. Uh, it's just not a good idea. Next thing on this is uh, the handle. The handle is uh, aircraft grade aluminum and uh, I know that you know a lot of people complain at uh, um, about aluminum on knives, especially uh, you know higher end knives, but which these are you know these are somewhat higher end. You're, you know, the, this is four hundred dollars. You're getting into Chris Reeve territory at that point. Um, but you know, the 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 aluminum that Microtech does is really, really good aluminum. It's rugged. It stands up. Uh, it it just um, it just adds sort of this uh, Microtech feel to a knife, which you really have to have in your hand to understand. Next thing, uh, this is. You know, a lot of people buy this for the rugged look. It also has a rugged feel. A lot of that has to do with the texturing on the handles. So a lot of people are familiar, I'll bring the SOCOM back. This is a SOCOM Elite. A lot of pe people are familiar with the texturing on the SOCOM Elite. It's very similar to the Kershaw Blur, um, just sort of like higher end. Uh, but the texturing here, uh, whereas this is sort of like a soft rubbery, almost, um, you know, skateboard tape type of feel, this is, uh, this is actually milled aluminum, right? And so those those uh, triangles are bump are, are milled into the aluminum. So they are uh, they are metal and they're very rugged. Uh, it, when you get this thing in hand, it just feels rugged. In fact, it feels more solid uh, than the body of the stitch feels more solid than the body of the SOCOM Elite, um, if you can believe it. Because the SOCOM Elite itself actually, despite being light, um, feels pretty solid. Uh, this, this feels even more solid, so that's great. Uh, next thing is the, the button doesn't fire uh, unless you really want it to fire. Um, I mean, I've had... Uh, uh, I've had a you know a bunch of SOCOMs um, or a couple of SOCOMs I should say with this same mechanism, uh, and I've also had this uh, as well carried. And this, you know, you have to press down pretty decently hard in order to deploy this. I'm not sure my kids could deploy it to be honest. Um, you have to press down pretty hard. I mean, um, it takes a good amount of force. Let me put it that way. Uh, so. I'm not that worried about it firing accidentally, and I do not think you need a safety uh, for that reason. The backspacer is aluminum and uh, is, has nice jimping. It sort of matches the jimping up here, and uh, it re works really well for, you know, to match sort of the rugged feel and uh, will help your hand uh, even more ergonomically stick in there with gloves, so that's great as well. Uh, the jimping up, in, up on here is nice and rounded, as you can see, uh, but still grippy, which is great jimping. So I'm very happy with that. Um, and uh, the hardware on here is not Microtech's uh, proprietary hardware like you see on an Ultratech. It is Torx bits. And these are T8s over here, I believe. And this, I cannot remember if it's a T15 or T20, but it is a large uh, Torx bit. And so, you know, that's a huge, huge plus in my book uh, is you have some large screws and some non-proprietary screws, uh, even though it's from Microtech. All right, so that is, uh, that's all the good. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the bad. So first of all, uh, it is kind of annoying. Um, I know it's the design element of the, of the custom, which is why it's in here, but you cannot use this, uh, this window here. You cannot use this to open up the thing. It does not open. It will not open until, unless you press the button. Okay, so, uh, you know, if you have any dreams of this being, you know, a, a knife you can flick open, you're gonna have to get the custom, uh, unfortunately, and those run, you know, thousands of dollars. So it is what it is. Next up's the price on this. The price is 400 bucks. Uh, you know, the SOCOM I think is a good deal at 300, 280, 300, which is where it's been hanging out at the last couple of years. I think it's a good price uh, and it's a really rugged knife at that, uh, at that price point. Um, and uh, I still believe that. This doesn't offer significant, you know, 
a significant upgrade, I should say, over the SOCOM Elite uh, in quality. It's the same company, same level of quality, same all that stuff. Um, the, you're really paying for the design on this, that extra hundred bucks, and you're starting to get into Chris Reeve territory. You know, the Sebenzas are 400 something dollars uh, for, I think the Smalls, the Smalls are 375 or something. I don't know. It's like, I think it's, yeah, 475 for the large or something like that, and, and uh, 375 for the small, maybe. You're getting into that territory. You're getting into Hinderer territory, you know, at 425. Um, you're getting into uh, Strider territory if you can catch the drops. Um, you know, so you're getting into pretty, pretty good company at $400. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure it necessarily stands up at that level, um, but it is definitely a high quality piece. So, um, you know, that's something to keep in mind. Next is this lanyard hole bugs the crap out of me, uh, mainly because it is not large enough for a lot of lanyards that people would want to put on here. Uh, and um, yet it's on here and causes the clip to have to be sit so much lower. So forget that it's not a deep carry clip. This thing is going to carry out of the pocket like this. This is what, what you're going to see sticking out of the pocket right here. It is, that is a lot of knife sticking out of the pocket. It just is, it just is. <laughs> um, also, the clip on this is kind of an ugly clip. Um, you know, it, it's it been called uh, phallic, but it, it's a pretty ugly clip. And um, yeah, not, not a big fan of that clip. Uh, and not necessarily because it looks like that, but just it, it looks weird, sad, and droopy elephant. I don't know exactly what it looks like, um, but uh, I don't necessarily love the clip. Um, all right, next I'm going to uh, talk about the spring on here. So the spring is, uh, it, it's good. I mean, look, this thing fires with authority. It really does. And, I, and the action was one of the things that I love about it. But the action could have been even better than it is. And the reason it's not is because of the, the spring tension in here. So let me uh, show, here's the uh, ProTech Emerson CQC 7. So... As you can see from this, when you, uh, I, I depress this so that it, uh, it disengages, and then, you know, no matter where I put it, right, well, that, that, that spot was fine, but here, no matter where I put it, it's gonna re-engage every single time. I think that I, I hit it once where it didn't, but it's, for the most part, it's gonna re-engage every time. Benchmade's new Claymore. This thing actually fires really hard. Actually, out of all these side opening autos that I have, even my Protex, even my Microtex, uh, this might fire the hardest. Now, it doesn't necessarily feel that because you have plastic handles on it. Um, but uh, as far as the spring, it definitely has the spring that fires the hardest. Interestingly, watch what happens when you, you know, when you depress this, right? It always springs back. I got it not to one time, right? Okay, fine. But for the most part, it it's always springing back, okay? All right. Now on here, every time I depress this, it's not just springing back. It's not springing back from this position or 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 this position, right? This is the point at which the spring starts to really add tension. That bugs me because as much tension as you can get from the rest of the way here and getting it nice and authoritative, if you if the tension started right here, that thing would have such kick and follow through that uh, I mean it would it would just be so satisfying. Uh, so it's, I, I view that as a missed opportunity. Um, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, and that, and that is something that's repeatable, by the way. In case anyone thought that you know that that was a fluke on this one. It's not a fluke on this one. It was more of a fluke on the other ones that I was able to get them to stop, you know, uh, or to not deploy all the way that one or two times. Um, next thing, Microtech does this on pretty much all their knives, but uh, that Microtech billboarding, yeah, that's ugly as hell. Um, I don't know why Microtech feels the need to do billboarding all over the blade, but it looks like garbage and you know, it's on everything. It's not really on the other side, which is fine, uh, but this side is covered in billboarding and it is what it is. I do like the fact that they serialize them uh, and they put the board on date, but it doesn't need to be this big and it doesn't need to be all over the blade. It could be on a card in the box. So anyway, 
Um, that is uh, what I love and what I don't love about the knife. Um, so why am I ultimately uh, getting rid of this? Because uh, I actually really do like it. It's so much fun to play with. Um, ultimately, I'm getting rid of it because the amount of cutting edge here just doesn't fit my needs, right? I, I want something with a little bit more cutting edge. This has the same cutting edge, um, I guess, as a... Uh, you saw as a paramilitary too, but the paramilitary too itself doesn't have a ton of cutting edge, right? So I'll give you an example. Here is the Mini Freak, okay? The Mini Freak has similar cutting edge to the paramilitary too. And it also has a similar cutting edge to the stitch. Now, look how much, look at the size difference between these two. Yeah, that's a big size difference. And for that reason, you know, you're gonna end up with, um, uh, with it's not gonna carry as well. It just isn't gonna carry as well in the pocket. Um, and because it doesn't carry as well in the pocket, it's not the best EDC. I mean, it, look, it actually slices, slices cardboard pretty well. It's like, it does all the normal EDC tests. This actually is a really good piercing blade for a lot of things, um, for packaging and things like that. But uh, as, as far as just an EDC blade for carryability, from a carryability standpoint, it's not, you know, the most carryable knife. Now, I do carry much, I do carry larger knives, right? You saw the SMF, you saw the, all these other things. So it's not like I don't carry them. But if, if you're asking me, is this a good EDC knife? It's not the best one. And if I'm going to have lar you know, large knives that are going to be pocket hogs, I'm probably not going to carry them every day. I've got to swap them out sometimes for smaller things. You know, something like this is very tactical and might scare people. Um, unfortunately, that's a consideration you have to take into, you know, take into mind when you go into the office, for example. I work in an office, so this isn't the best office knife. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but I do it really, really enjoy it, and I've really enjoyed owning it. And if somebody asks me, do I recommend the knife? Yeah, I do. Just know what you're getting into, right? I do recommend the knife, um, but, you, but with the caveat that you know that you're getting into this knife more for looks, uh, you know, and for, um, you know, the comfort of this, of this grip up here, because this grip back here really isn't that comfortable. That's something I forgot to, to mention on the negatives, actually, is that this grip back here is pretty bad. Um, but uh, this grip up here is excellent. Um, so as long as you know that you're, uh, you're, you're gonna carry it like this and you're going to um, only use this amount of cutting edge and you're not worried about you know, this scaring people and you're not worried about the carryability, uh, if all those things are fine with you, then yes, I definitely recommend this. Um, and this is a lot of fun to have. Also with, with the fact that it's an auto, just make sure it's legal in your area before you carry it. Um, and uh, be aware of your local laws. Thank you guys so much for watching. Always appreciate the feedback. Go ahead and drop a comment and let me know. Uh, again, if you like this video and you want to see more content like this, go ahead and like the video. That does help me uh, you know, gauge which, which video, which content you guys like. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. It definitely helps the channel. Thanks so much.